I got a proposition for you. Uh oh, you got a proposition for me? I got a proposition for you. All right guys, so the transmission for the WLA project is done. And, and just to, guys, to give you guys some scope of this, Okay, so Matt from Wheels to Time is like, I don't, wanna, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna rebuild that. And we're like, okay. He sent us to another guy. That other guy was very, very old and doesn't like doing it either. <laughs> he, he just, he, he's, he's winding down. He's like, I do a couple for my friends. We couldn't get him to do it. So we're really running out of options of who can rebuild this transmission. And I, I, don't, I personally don't know what's so complicated about it. And then the guy, Tim, who, who saw one of our videos, uh, came by, made us, a, made us a reasonable offer on a trade for our engine. He said he could do it. And he's like, he's like, I'm not gonna charge you very much. And we're like, cool, let's get this thing done. So it, it is done, we're gonna go check it out. We're gonna ask him some more questions. But we got some more stuff, check this thing out. This is the seat. Now I know you guys are thinking, you're like, oh, you, why are you making such a big deal about a dumb seat? First of all, this is the old seat. You got some like asbestos stuff on the bottom. And it, this, the fact that the, we still have this is, is amazing. This is the main thing that connects you to this bike and it is, it's so cool looking. It's a very unique color. We weren't 100% sold. When he sent me pictures, it looked really, really red, like too red, but I actually really like it. I think this is gonna work out perfectly. So I'm, I'm so excited about this. This is about, if you wonder what something like this costs, it's about 300 bucks for us to get this thing done. Um, worth every penny. Now you, you can go you can go buy one, you can go buy a, uh, the whole thing. All, this, this is the original seat pad. What's unusual about the seat pad um, we learned this from uh, Matt from Wheels to Time, is it's a special racing seat. So e either it was a, a regular seat that was cut down, because normally it would come up like a lot wider. So it was cut down as a racing seat, or it's some type of racing seat that came from Harley Davidson. We're not really sure. Uh, Craig sandblasted this, got it all painted. They put some they put some pad in here, and then once we have the spring seat, that's gonna make the ride really, really good. And really good compared to what it was before, which was just n a metal seat. I was sitting on a metal seat, with this thing hanging on it for some of the way, this is no cushion at all. And then the, the pogo was just completely fixed in there. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. I mean, the project is coming along really, really, really well. We got new rims coming. That's kind of the next, uh, next thing we got to work on. Now for the paint, let me, I'm gonna sit down. I'm gonna tell you guys all about what's going on. We've decided on blue. Well, actually, I, actually, let me go look. Let's go look and see what the decision is. I think it's blue, but I haven't looked at it in a little while. Out of 6,042 6, responses, blue. And that's not just any blue, it's, it's, it's this blue, that blue. But I, I, don't, I don't just wanna do the flat blue. I mean, I don't just want to do just all blue. Uh, one of the coolest things that I learned when I was at the uh, Wheel Through Time was Harley Davidson, you can do, you can put colors together that I wouldn't normally think should be together and then put some pinstriping and a lot of different really cool stuff. And it's like, that looks so, I, I would never would have guessed that. I never would have chose that, that color scheme. You know, it's very different than a car. You know, cool old cars or cool cars are kind of like one color, maybe some white pinstripes or something like that. That only works on some things. But with these old Harley Davidsons, this pinstriping and different color, it, it, it really works out. It, to, just to show you what I'm talking about, here's some examples some cool things I saw at Wheels Through Time. As you, you guys can see what I'm, what I'm seeing. Recently I found out I got a buddy at Harley Davidson. Well, I, I, I don't wanna say more than I'm allowed to say, but um, I'm hoping to work with someone who really knows how to design a Harley Davidson and who really knows how to design a color scheme. And that's, that's kind of the, my current scheme for the overall designing of the spike. So I, I can actually show you guys, like this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. But you guys gotta stay tuned for that. Let's go out and go pick up the transmission. We need a tote, we need something. We'll grab a tote so we can put it in. And then I wanna tell you guys about another bike I'm looking at. But uh, let's go, uh, let's go see our friend Tim. So I was watching a uh, Bear Grylls show and they had a uh, Danica Patrick on it. And they did that cool, like when they started the, 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 the vehicle up and they showed all the different parts. I'm like, that's cool, I'm gonna, do I'm gonna do it. Every time I'm driving a vehicle, I need that starting sequence. So we're gonna start doing it with the bikes and we might as well do it with my, uh, with my cars too. Where are we going? Oh, we're going to the bank. All right, so first we gotta go to the bank, grab some money. Then we go to the shop and grab some cool stuff for Tim. I got, I got a surprise for Tim. Um, I think he's gonna like it. I think you guys are gonna like it. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm pumped. I mean, he, he's really helped us out so much. It's, it, it's something that's cool about, if we never started this build, if we never bought this bike, started this build, 
wrote it home. I mean, we've made a handful of really, really good uh, friends. N not just good contacts in the industry and in the classic antique motorcycle department, but actually like really cool people that I enjoy hanging out with, I enjoy seeing. They need a favor, they can call me and I can, I can help them out. You know what I mean? Just really cool people that I'm pumped about. Yo, yo okay, Dude, could someone tell me what that is? What that symbol is? Don't show his license plate. <laughs> Is that, I assume it's a country or something like that. I don't know. Is it a river? We're fussing no. over it. It might just be a scratch. It might just be a, yeah, his window's broken. <laughs> uh, leave in the comments. I want, I, want, I want to know what that is. I'm trying, I'm trying to learn stuff over here. All right, so we actually got uh, Craig's loaning some bikes up. We're about to uh, run some. We had a couple bikes, maybe six or seven bikes that we still had here that we wanted to send to auction. And Craig's doing that right now. What's up, Craig? What's happening? Is, it, is this the one not running? Yeah, of course the two Hondas won't start. Oh no, -uh. that one's not starting. No, oh, dang it. And it's plugged in. I don't unless I'm doing something wrong. Maybe. But yeah, it's plugged in. It should be. Where's the uh, key fob? It. What's awesome looking key? There's something that the key fob has to touch. I don't know what it is for when you're starting a dead battery. Because the because this if 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 this is dead. Um, there's a way that you can put it through and it's like a pass through and okay. it actually it, it doubles as a, as a passive key fob for this exact situation yep. because you're right it's it says it says charge right it should be I mean it's I been plugged in well, did it almost pop off I think maybe the starter was stuck in there or something like that maybe. nice all right so who does the mechanic call when you gotta fix something unmechanically, <laughs> me. So this thing, uh, it, it sat for a long time, and it, when you, uh, it was battery was good. You you'd go to start it, wouldn't do anything, and then we, um, we tried to pop start it. I think I think what happened was the, the starter was stuck out in the gears, and it wasn't engaged because it was already engaged. But now we're good. All right, so all. all all motorcycles that have a uh, that have a key fob, all vehicles with a key fob they keep in your pocket, has a spot that you can hold the key fob to on BMWs. It's underneath the the back tail. Or on GM BMW GS bikes and Ford F-150s, it's inside the glove, inside the uh, cup holder. This one you gotta pop this, you gotta pop this thing open. Somewhere in here is a key. Oh, uh, here we go. All right, so. Alright, so we put this in there, it unlocks the only the left saddlebag, which I was wondering how we did that. Put that key back in there. Ooh. This is how you can see so you can pop the other side saddlebag by pulling this little lever off that cable off there. Nope, Honda makes it harder. So Honda does not give you an actual spot that you can just tap the key to. Honda gives you a code that you've got to keep. You do some sequence of holding the trunk or holding the e-brake and pressing the start button. That's supposed to do something, but because we don't have that 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 key, that number that you're supposed to have when you were, when you got the bike, we're not gonna be able to do that unless let's just check it real quick. It's at 13.4 volts. That should be enough for it to fire up. Now here's a trick: if you're if you're stuck and you're out in the the sticks or you can't get to anything, if you rub your finger on that battery to get it warm, you might be able to get one more start or a couple more starts out of it. Because 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 batteries are so susceptible to cold. Yeah. I've, I've I've successfully done it on Harley Davidson. When you were stuck out in the sticks. Stuck out in the sticks. Out in the wilderness. Out in the sticks. Warm that baby up. Hey! Nice. We got it. Put that in there. Let's fire this baby up. I'm a little disappointed in, in Honda making it so hard. So that you actually have to have a code. So you pop that back panel off. You open this up. Then you from this from this panel, you open this, this, this other saddle bag up. And then you need a code that like, we don't have. It's like Contra. Now I forgot how to do it, but this bike actually has a way that you can throttle, you can switch back and forth very quickly from reverse to go to do, you know, like 12 point turns. That's something to do with this. I don't remember how to do it. 
We're gonna do it the hard way. All right, so we're gonna surprise. Well, I'll show you what happens. Let's, let's go grab some cool stuff. Gotta grab some cool stuff for our boy Tim. Ben, we need four blue tank straps. We're also we're gonna need a patch. We also need a pair of um, 508s. That- Maybe we can put them all stuff in this bag. Come on, let's go see Tim. Now he must not be home. There he is. Hey, John. Hey, brown dog looks awesome outside. Yeah, it needs a bath. I mean, we saw it in here. We couldn't really see how cool it was, you know what I mean? But outside looks great. How you been? Good. Good. Sass, did, how, how was your race? It was good. You win? Well, I got second. So you keep on coming second to first, that same guy? I was the first loser. Yeah. <laughs> Second's pretty good, though. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it went pretty well. Is, is this your first time? It was your first time racing first Sassy, time right? First time out, yes. Wow. And it usually takes a half a season, maybe even a whole season to get it sorted out. Where's, uh, is that it? Yeah. So what, what did you discover when, uh, when you pulled it apart? Like, did well, it? I think the worst, the worst part, one of the worst parts was the clutch was so crudded up. It probably wasn't disengaging like it should. Oh yeah, because it, it was, it, it was hard to get in the gear. It was grinding yeah. when it gets in the gear. I mean, it was so full of mud and rust, you know. Mud. Replaced all that. Um, the other issue was it the so good. end play okay. on the main shaft yeah. was out to about 35 thousandths. Supposed to be between three and seven. Wow. So we got, got that space out right. And what would that have caused? What would that have, what would well, that have this, done? This caused just to shift back and forth a little bit. Oh, uh, so that would have made the gear sloppy feeling? Well, that could be part of it, and it could also be in the linkage. Okay. Your shift linkage. Okay. From the tank on back. Oh, God. oh right, 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 right. Because yeah. there's a lot of moving pieces there. If you have a little bit of slop, it, it yeah. gets multiplied. You've got all a pushing different... on your tank where the shifter mounts. Right. You know, if that gets sloppy. Right. And then your linkage, I just put this on for a demo. Okay. But your linkage comes in here, the shift lever. Yeah. And if that linkage gets worn there, then you got slop there also. Yeah, right. So. And a little bit of slop there, over here. Feels like a lot of slop. Yeah. Do you have time for a little demo? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Here's you got two shafts. You got okay. your main shaft, counter shaft. Okay. okay. The main shaft carries your three gears and mm-hmm. reverse if you have reverse, which you don't. And the only reverse would be for the same the same setup, but then with the with a survey car. Yeah. That will go right here. Instead, you have a spacer here. This would be first gear, second gear, third gear. Okay. So you got your shifter connected to your shifter gear, connected to the shifting drum. Shifting drums connected to the shifting forks. Shifting forks is connected to your shifter clutches. Mm-hmm. That's this guy here and that guy. Okay. When you're shifting, that's first gear. It's in first gear now. See how slow it's gone? Yeah. yeah. It's neutral. Okay. See, your gears are engaging to the counter shaft, which transferred power to the clutch gear, to the clutch, to the motor. Got it. So there, you're in first, neutral, and second is coming second. That's this guy here. And then third is over here. Oh, wow. See how fast it's moving now? Yeah. These little indents, you see these indents? Yeah. All right. So you have a spring-loaded ball bearing that rides mm. against that. Okay. It's adjustable. That's what you feel when, it, when, it, when it's in gear. That's the whole point of you yeah. can feel and it helps you go in. Feel, yeah. Go back and forth there. Oh, yeah. That's how your that shifter feels should feel. so good. That feels great. Because I noticed when you were riding, you were looking down. Yeah. You shouldn't have to do yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't feel anything. Was, right. was, it, was this thing completely gunked up? Like, was the spring just not there or something like no, that? No, it was there. It was there. Yeah. That, but, feels, uh, that feels amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of that myself sometimes. I look down, you know, yeah. what's going on. Well, that was the first time I ever rode a, a foot clutch bike. Yeah, right. Yeah. You did an amazing job. <laughs> did the best. For what you had. <laughs> did the best I could, yeah. I mean, you rode four hours with... With no pogo stick? Are yeah. you kidding me? Oh, man. It was horrible. <laughs> you must have had a sore foot <laughs> yeah, by the was, time you got home. It, it was horrible. Yeah, I was, I was in pain. I was in pain for Wait. sure. <laughs> well, you're going to have a, a nice ride. Yeah, I'm excited. I'll bet. Once you get this thing. Oh, okay. The other thing. The reason you were doing 45 miles per hour. Yeah. That had a 15 tooth 
main shaft sprocket. Normally, it's a 17 tooth. Okay. That's going to give you about 10 more miles per hour. Okay. So we put a new old stock 17 oh, cool. tooth on. There. Okay. Now <laughs> I've, I've seen some. I've seen some bikes uh, when I was at the uh, at Wacker Brewing. Some said they can do 100 miles an hour. Are they changing these gears? Are they no. changing these gears? Are they changing the uh, the final drive gear, like the rear gear? No, no. Well, dirt trackers usually change the final, okay. the newer dirt trackers. But back in the early days, they changed the motor sprocket. Okay. That would be this collection right here on the Oh, uh, so, so you would, you got some, See the 30 tooth? They had that collection. That goes so, up to a 34. So what do you have on mine? You have like, I get 20 I don't know what's on yours. No, what's on mine now? No, no, these are motor sprockets. These go on the motor. Oh, 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 oh okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, this yeah, is the these transmission. Go on the motor. Those go on the motor. So they changed those back in the day. Okay. And they changed this. Now this 15 is more for short track, hill climb, uh, short TT tracks, drag racing, you know. So you had three different gears that you could change the ratio to. On the transmission here, you got 15. 16 and 17 and then up the motor you can do all kind of stuff. whatever you want to do yeah now this gear is the only other one i ever saw in my 25 years in this business and i only have the other one really yeah well now you have this to, is now probably you worth probably worth 1500 bucks now you have two of them no i don't know this is yours yeah keep no it. you're gonna keep this for, all right i'll keep for it. your racing your hill all climbing. right all right i will do some i'll do some hill climbing you hear that he's gonna do some hill climbing oh this I don't want to, that bike's too pretty. It's going to look too good. <laughs> no, this is really cool. That's actually in better shape than the one I have. It's really but, cool. No, it's not worth 1500 <laughs> but it's probably, probably worth 150 Yeah. No, that's awesome. So that's about it. Um, so overall, um, you say it was in pretty decent shape? The or, inside was, yes. Okay. The outside was, I had to take a chisel to get the mud off. It looked like it sat in a junkyard for 30 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it was... It was hard, like cement. Yeah, oh, I mean, we were dealing with the rest of the bike. Yeah, it was, in, it was really hard to get off. How many other people, you're, you're better connected into the community than I am, but how many other people can actually do this? Can rebuild these transmissions because... A, a good friend of mine, um, Ralph Camp. Okay. Uh, it's with Ralph Racing. Mm. He does it. Okay. Full time. He's in um, South Carolina. Okay. But he does, he's more into... Uh, putting close ratio gears in for racing oh, okay he does all my close ratios for oh cool yeah we were having the hardest time trying to find someone it looks beautiful I mean, this looks, it looks amazing i can't wait i can't wait to get it back the um yeah i restored this oh yeah yeah wow yeah they were bad you like i know you wanted to keep original as many original parts as you could so I, this yeah. is all original hardware I really replace the rubbers you how did you replace these rubbers like where <clears> did you get this from well it comes apart it's aftermarket okay it, all it comes, looks great. It looks great, though. It all comes apart. Now I'm gonna have some grip. It was all flopping off before, and well, yeah, they were. Another thing I do, I put a little tack weld here. Okay, yeah. And I'll tell you why, because usually, like, it was worn. Oh, and it was, and it it was flopping down. Like this, and then when you're kicking it, you slip it off. Slipping off. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we got that fixed. That is New, so cool. So out bearing. That throw out bearing was terrible. Terrible. Yeah, I just replaced what I had to replace. You got a new clutch, clutch springs. It's ready to rock and roll. That's awesome. Man, that is a good looking bike though. I just had this running. Oh, did you? Yeah. Man, I, now who, I've seen some really cool exhaust. Who did their, who did your exhaust? A friend of mine, uh, uh, Brandon, he has, uh, oh, he has a shop. He's in the stainless steel business. Could, could he? I can, I can hook you up with him. Cause I've seen some really, this is just pretty, this is pretty, uh, yeah, that's this a, is that's, beautiful work. That's professional. So I, I need I need something like that for our bike. Yeah, what he does is breweries. Oh Where yes, he, he, he yes he does those big uh the the big uh, tanks. Yeah, and they're all inch and a half, same as this. Oh wow. Yeah. So he oh, has that is everything cool. in the stock. We gotta fire this thing up. Yeah, I'm fired up. It's a, what's called a handheld starter. That's cool. Yeah, all the. Uh, Oh, the big guys, that's what they use. Either that or rollers. Right. I don't care for rollers myself. What do you put that on? You got a starter nut on the shaft. On the other side. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Make some noise. So that's how you, so, so you, you did that just to hold the clutch down. Yep. Out of the way.
That sounds so good. We can make yours sound like that. Yeah. Hey, we, uh, I got a proposition for you. Uh-oh, you got a proposition for me? I got a proposition for you. Oh, let me, let me Let me go, uh, let me go grab something real quick. Okay. So I was wondering if you would like to be our very first Bikes and Beards sponsored racer. Holy crap. We got a pair of our, uh, these are one of the only Kevlar line motorcycle gloves on the market. We manu we, had, we had these made for us. I actually, I, I actually drug my hand on the, uh, I got a video of me dragging my hand for about a quarter mile on the highway. Didn't even wear through the gloves. Wow. So figure out which size, figure out which one fits you. And then we got, um, these are our tie down straps. We, have, we, we manufactured these for us for our own bikes. Best tie down straps out there. I'm the very first. You're the very first. Racer. Yeah. That's awesome. What do you think? You want to be our first? Uh, all you got to do is just have, all you got to do is just have this patch somewhere around you in your shop, on your gear. I don't care where you have it. I put it on my leathers. Put it on your leathers? Yeah. Yeah, you want to do, do you it? Have, do you have a decal for my trailer? We can get a decal for your trailer. Yeah. And then obviously I'm, I, I got a check for you to, to I got a check to cover the, the parts and your labor and stuff like that. And then also, you know what I mean? It's here's just to keep you rolling. Keep you going to the races. <laughs> keep round dog running. Keep, uh, I know racing's not cheap, but. Oh, um, no. Not at all. Not at all. Hopefully if you're, if you're, if you're representing the brand, you got to keep on running, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, that's awesome, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Very Thank cool. you. Uh, You've been really, you've been really kind to us, man. We we really appreciate your help. Very cool. I'm I'm just um, happy to be a, a part of the project. I think it's a cool project. You know? Yeah. And, yeah. Well, yeah. it was it's, it's crazy. It, it's a god thing that you that you found us and you called us up and you know <laughs> and, and we had you come over. So so I'm super. Um, and this backpack, keep this backpack, keep everything in there. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, these are good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This covers your bill. No, I, I'm I got the bill. I got a check right here. That that this, that's for the sponsorship. Is it gas money? That's gas money. Oh, that's gas crap. money. That's race money. Gas money? Yeah. Okay, got to keep you racing. Yeah, I don't have any excuses now. No, I know you don't. We all good with that? Yeah. Now these studs, you got to be careful you don't screw out because they will leak oil. And so far, it hasn't leaked a drop of oil. Looks like we got a good one. You made that custom, custom transmission stand. Yep. Does this go with it, or is this uh? Yeah, take it with it. These go on the bottom. Yeah. I'm gonna put them on. Yeah. Well, here, put them on here. This uh, calls for six ounces of oil. Uh huh. That usually an ounce will leak out, and then you know it's at the right level. Right. That's how you figure it out. That's how I figure it out. We we'll probably want to use better washers than that anyway, but. So those are for the mounting bolts underneath. Yeah. But the lock washers are better. I couldn't find, I only had one. Okay, remember that people when we're putting this thing together. Ready? Yep. Is that everything? I really appreciate this yeah, no, sponsorship, man. No it's, problem, I think it's you are. It's so uh, awesome. No, I'm excited, I can't, I can't wait to see you race. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Does this mean I have to win every time? Uh, yeah, I need to win. <laughs> I'm the oldest guy in the group. So are I'm you? Like, yeah. By how much? Um, well, there's one other guy. He didn't show up. He's a couple years older than me, but most of them are younger. The way Tim has treated towards us reminds me of a Bible verse, Psalm 112.5. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Well, and that's Tim, our best buddy Tim, our first uh, Bikes and Beards sponsored racer. Can't wait to see uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of exciting new things happening for Tim. Guys, that wraps up the video. We'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe.